Right. Well, I think we can go ahead and get started. Thank you all for participating in this fun little um, uh, icebreaker for our inter-reach hiatus. Um, it's wonderful to see everyone back um, and it's wonderful to be back. Um, I was on maternity leave last year and so really excited to be back for this year. And we've got a great um, session today and a great year lined up of inter-reach programming. So we're happy you guys are here. So um, Christine, you wanna go ahead to the next? Great, so we are here today to um, just to kind of take stock and, and um, welcome new folks and um, welcome all of our returning InterReach community members. So I'll go ahead and um, introduce myself. My name is Christine Glauber. I am a co-chair of the InterReach community of practice. And I've got my fellow co-chairs here um, and I'll ask them to each introduce themselves. Christine, you wanna introduce yourself? Sure. Um, hi, everybody. Great to see everyone. I'm Christine Hendren. Um, I am at Appalachian State University, where I serve as the interim vice provost for research and innovation. Um, and I'm a faculty member in geological and environmental sciences. So but mostly in arrow. Happy to see everyone. Um, and I'll pass it to you, Amalia. Hello, I'm Amalia Turner. I am the Team Science Training and Education Coordinator at the Duke Clinical and Translational Science Institute and a research navigator. Um, I've been here at Duke for um, going on a, 11 years, I, I think. Um, it's originally in environmental engineering and now I'm kind of full-time in uh, research support and uh, team science. Wonderful. Thank you both. And um, yeah, we're here because we uh, are this community of practice, Interdisciplinary Integration Research Careers Hub, and you're going to get some more information about the history of our community of practice um, a little bit later in today's session. But the long and short is that research on complex problems requires integration across boundaries, and Interreach is a community of four people who make that actually happen. So let's go ahead and go to the next slide. Um, we want to get a sense of who's with us today. So um, Christine, will you just advance one more? If you have been with Interreach since the beginning, can you go ahead and rent, enter OG in the chat? Let's see who we got here, who our OGs are. Oh yeah, Stephanie, Christine, anyone else? All right, Christine, you want to advance one more? Oh, Chris Lund, yeah, Chris, you're definitely an OG. Nice to see you here. Okay, second round. If you joined Interreach before 2022, go ahead and enter the year you joined us. Okay, couple of question marks, but 2018, Nicole, 2021, Veronica, and Carmen, also 2021. Yep, Marissa, 2018. Okay. Anyone else? All right. Let's go ahead to the third round. If you're new to Interreach in the past year or so, enter your role and affiliation in the chat so we can learn more about you. All right. Okay, Chris and Mona, thank you. Nice to see you both here. All right, here they come. <laughs> it usually takes a while for people to start answering these. Okay, Lisa, University of Colorado Boulder, Ashton, NC State, Miley, 2022, Jeremy, uh, Syracuse University, Jennifer, hi, Dory, wonderful to see you here, Vicki and App State, and let's see, oh, they're starting to move fast, this is great, Julie, hello, Oregon State, or uh, Kim, oh, there's like a, something in the way, oh, NSF SCC, great, great, awesome. <laughs> These are great. 
Okay. Well, welcome everyone, Colleen, Melanie. Melanie, great to see you here. It's been a while since I've seen you. This is great. Um, oh, wonderful. Thank you guys so much for being here. And it's so wonderful to get to, to meet all of you. Um, and we are so excited to have you here with us today. So um, we wanted to just get a sense from you guys. Um, and Christine, you can go back one more because um, we're actually gonna we're gonna move over to Jamboard, um, and um, we're gonna we want to just get a sense for a little more about who you guys are. So, um, Amalia, do you think you could drop that Jamboard link in the chat? Wonderful, thank you so much. You want me to share that screen, Christine? Um. I think it should be okay because if people click on the link in the Jamboard, they might get confused if Zoom and Jamboard are going. So we want everyone to go over to Jamboard now. We just want to learn a little bit more about who you guys are um, and get some get some interaction going. So if you go to that Jamboard, it looks like it may be taking you to page three when you get there, if the screen is black in that Jamboard, then go ahead and um, in the middle at the top, there's two little arrows that surround two little rectangles. If you move over to the previous frames, so go ahead to and go to screen one, um, there's a, a prompt there, what brought you to interreach? Oh, and a couple of people need some edit access. Okay. Uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. Is it, are people able to, okay, I'm, I'm seeing that there are folks in there. Is anyone not able to act? It's just view only. Um, you should have edit access now. Okay. Okay. All right. So. Screen one, what brought you to InterReach? This is a chance for you guys to just share a little bit about what brought you to InterReach. And you can do that in a way that that feels good for you. If you wanna add a, a post-it note, um, you can go ahead and do so um, by adding a post-it note. There's a, a toolbar on the left-hand side. Also, if you're someone that is really kind of interested in uh, pictorial um, um, expressions, go ahead and add a picture or you can draw something that um, that would be wonderful. You can add a picture um, on that toolbar. It's the fifth tool down, add image. You can Google search for an image, um, whatever it is. So, oh, there's a lot of Christine's. <laughs> Christine is the, the connector of this group and the founder. <laughs> A connector, A everyone connector. here. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right. We've got a lot of post-it notes coming in. Okay, all right. <laughs> so there's a couple in here I just want to point out. Divine hunger, whose is that? <laughs> and I'd love to hear a little more about what divine hunger means and how that brought you to, to reach. <laughs> if you feel like sharing. Yeah, sure. Um, um, so, <laughs> excuse me, I'm trying to eat over here too. So, but, um, but I guess, you know, like in a world where you kind of feel like you're alone and you're doing this and there's something inside of you that just keeps driving you to connect more and to get yourself out there more. Um, and to, uh, yeah, like search search for for your tribe more or less, because I know that what I do is effective. Um, and it's something that is one of those things that, you know, is absolutely necessary for some folks, 
but it works for everybody. So, yeah, it's just the drive inside of me. I, my son would say, you know, you got that dog that lives in you that just won't quit. So that's pretty much where I'm coming from. I love it. I love it. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for being here and for sharing that. Because I think a lot of us do feel that. And I think that's probably why many of us have joined this group. So thank you so much for putting those really wonderful words to that. Let's see. We've got Sites Conference, the Nordup and Insights Conference. Um, Amalia is a person that has brought another connector for Interreach. That's wonderful. Um, let's see. I just want to ask if um, any of our, um, let's see, Chris Lund, do you want to take it um, just to share real quick as an OG member, what brought you to this group? Uh, sure. Um, I just put up the post-it. I want to discuss the institutional ways to help the arrow. Uh, so I'm uh, currently leading a, a project that's going to end soon, but uh, in the its total of financing amounted to uh, around 15 million over the years. And so we've been able to uh, develop this kind of a position that we're talking about, but we haven't yet been able to institutionalize the position. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, given all the competence that has been um, able to emerge in these different kinds of uh, positions that, that we all talk about, uh, be it integration expert or executive interdisciplinary scientist, or um, I, I'm still <laughs> looking for discussion on on how to um, support this kind of a this kind of a position more broadly, Wonderful. and this is one of the really reasons why I joined the the community as well. Excellent, thank you, thank you for sharing that. And I I, I think we have some um, webinars this this year, but also I think there's um, a couple other opportunities that we'll talk about later to kind of get at some of that. Um, the discussion that you want to have. Sorry, Kitty. Um, can we go over to the second Jamboard, um, the next frame, and just go ahead and describe yourself in two words. Um, you can use the, the post-it notes here again. So some examples are at the top, a curious skeptic, a community builder, um, a connector, joyful risk taker, idea machine. Let's see what we get. Ooh, burned out. Data Wrangler. You can always add more than one too. Yes. People adore, love these. Ah an advocate, experience improver, coach and champion of others, ball roller, sites preacher. <laughs> great. These are great. Unflappable optimist, systems explorer. Wonderful. So great to see all these. Make sure that we ha aren't hiding a few here. All right, great. Ooh, a hound dog, cheerleader and project architect. Learner and connector, chasm jumper. These are really great. Wonderful. Thank you guys. Okay, I feel like, so we're gonna have some opportunities to really kind of connect with each other in um, 
in a in breakout rooms a little bit later. And so it would be great if folks want to sort of introduce themselves as their um, how they describe themselves here. It'd be great to start to put some faces to, to these um, descriptors. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. I am going to pass it on over to Christine, who is going to share um, the slides again and, and give us a little bit of history about Interreach. OK, so um, I'm going to go pretty quick through this uh, because that way we can save more time for some interaction. And because it's such an awesome community, we're a little bit behind um, anyway. So if I am going really fast, um, we will make these slides available in case anybody ever wants to reference them. But just kind of in acknowledging that not everybody has been here since the very beginning, um, we'll talk about some of this. So the this is the original, um, low quality PowerPoint that I made in like 2014 to try to explain um, when I was first invited to the Science of Team Science Conference by a science technology and society researcher, anthropologist Sharon Koo. She was studying me and my center and she said, you got to come talk about what you do. And I said, well, I have no idea what these people will be interested in. And she said, well, just tell your perspective. And um, and so then that's kind of where interreach came from, because when I got up there and told my perspective, a bunch of people came up and said, oh, my gosh, that's me, too. We all have the same kind of experience, which is if you have this generic type of box and arrows diagram describing a big interactive team, which many of us have seen, you would have all of these different fields maybe listed. Right. And so if you have this and you're looking at the economics box, when you're building a team, there's no way you wouldn't put a person's name with an economics background in that box, right? And there's gonna be a person in the agricultural science box and so on, but magically the arrows, the information between them is just supposed to happen. And so realizing that, that you know, as we all know, that's not true and it either becomes invisible emotional labor or unexamined and, um, or it doesn't happen correctly, right? Um, so we realized the actual integration part is actually um, its own expertise. And so when that light bulb came on for those of us uh, kind of seeing that intersection between team science researchers and practitioners, a lot of the people who have been studying that and saying this exact thing for 30 years could have been grouchy about it, but instead they said, well, here, I'm so glad you came to the party. Maybe you want to read my textbook, uh, you, you know, want to uh, be led into this and help build that kind of what we think of as this estuary, um, sort of like a mixing zone between people who are studying how to do this arrow work and how to actually um, do it, you know, as a practitioner itself. So uh, this is what happened. We went, um, I went around and said, who wants to be on an email list? And we'll just ask each other questions. And it turned out to be a bunch of people and then it's grown from there. And so we said, okay, well, Eureka, you have to actually be the arrow. And um, it went from this sort of group over a few years, um, meeting always at the Science of Team Science Conference um, as kind of the home base, but then meeting in between to talk about this. And we said, we wanna be a community of practice to understand roles um, like Chris Lund talked about, You know, how do you actually support those, compare language and experiences, share strategies, draw on team science literature in this kind of mixing zone. And we um, it came with the help of uh, two leaders in particular, Gabrielle Bammer and Holly Falk Krasinski um, to distill this kind of dual mission of developing the profession and professional development. So developing the profession is what Chris was um, putting into words really well is just making the case that this is a thing and that this could be an institutionalized set of roles. You could grow up to be an arrow on purpose, hence, the name of uh, the series this year. And then professional development is okay. If we have this sense that we could be doing this better and doing this well on purpose, then how do we you know, develop those resources and share them? Um, we've talked a lot over the years as the community's grown uh, about who it's for. And we're really specifically not 
uh, adapting even just one of these titles of what kind of roles, because a lot of us see ourselves in this skill set and this, these behaviors and capacities, but we might sit in different places within an academic institution or many, many other kinds of organizations. So this is um, a graphic that just kind of pulls together some established names, but it's not exhaustive. So research development professionals, they, um, IES is what we call this interdis interdisciplinary executive scientist role, where it's not a faculty driven um, role, but does work in academic research integration. I2S or integration and implementation science specialists, which is an actual academic discipline um, founded uh, by Gra Gabrielle Bammer in her work. And then another one was community engagement manager. So um, if you know Lou Woodley's work, there's a lot of, of work in training these capabilities. So at the center of it, it's really that those four and anything else that is also sharing knowledge, um, sharing these boundary spanning skills um, and sharing really this disp dispositional traits and tacit wisdom um, that you may just kind of, we self-select for these types of people that want to connect, but there's also information we believe and skill sets that you can impart and improve on. So all these roles um, and others are welcome here. It's just, there's lots of different roles. And then within those roles and the constraints, the social design constraints around them, you may have also different determinants of your success um, in those. So this is a lot. Um, and the point of this is that it's taken a lot of time and you know, it's not just been a few people. It's been lots of folks who are combining the effort and putting kind of wind in the sails to say, yeah, we want to keep showing up. We still have things we can learn from each other. We have things we're getting from this community that maybe we're not getting and um, reflecting back in others. So the groundwork came way before, you know, disciplining the there are interdisciplinary um, studies association has uh, been around for um, or its association for interdisciplinary studies has been around since the late 70s um, there you know we started out originally on this science of team science panels kind of exploring hey is there a role for this stuff over time um, we started into reach through up this website started to snowball into meeting regularly um, figuring out that it can kind of be like an ongoing conference all year uh, if we want. And the beauty of it is it's low lift and we're making it up as we go. So anyone who's on this call is part of making it up as we go as much as you want to be. Um, and so this is just a few different, every year we would do a different panel, see what we could do together. Um, what we have realized is that it's really easy to think of things that someone should do. And then it's really hard to do those things as an unfunded side gig. So we really try to keep it streamlined, easy, show up and, and get what we can from things. Um, so lots of different groups. There's also uh, Insights, the birth of Insights as a 501c3 um, was on the heels of a decade or more of work of people keeping it together. Um, and so although, you know, really they, the organization predated us, even though the naming and the website going up um, came after. So it was really a chicken and egg um, situation, which we have loved. So then um, also the Inter and Transdisciplinary Alliance Working Group, uh, their, uh, the Inter and Transdisciplinary Alliance is a European I wouldn't say the counterpart, but also organization focused on um, a very similar kind of convergent and complex efforts, right? Um, and so there is a working group that formed on boundaries, boundary spanning professionals um, and professions. And then most, most recently, um, there's a working group that some of us uh, are lucky enough to be a part of that is called the Working Group on Integration Experts and Expertise. So there's just, there's a number of people in different what Gabrielle Bemmer calls neighborhoods of this kind of work that are realizing that this is a skill set that's worth uh, examining. So this is just um, a little bit of the history and shared motivation. Um, and I think what I'll do now is pass it to Christine to talk about the, the evolution of the inner reach programming um, before we go back to some interactive stuff. Great, thanks, Christine. Yeah, and Christine touched on, um, it's always fun to have two people who have the same name on one call who are just talking back to each other. <laughs> but um, Christine touched on a bunch of these um, um, kind of 
waypoints on our journey here. Um, but um, as you can see, our monthly webinar really launched in November of 2016. Um, and these webinars are all recorded. So um, in a little while, I'm gonna show you our website so you can go ahead and see where the, um, all of the old recordings live if, um, if you wanna dive in and, and um, take a peek at what we've, what we've come up with in the past. You can view all of our old recordings on um, via the website. So that's really wonderful that we have this um, sort of shared institutional knowledge. Um, and then in January of 2019, um, we just have seen a ton of growth. And I think a lot of that really had to do with are recognizing that we needed to sort of formalize our programming and, and formalize our, our modes of interaction. I think prior to that, it had been sort of, you know, when can you meet? Let's do this here. And so then um, starting in January of 19, 2019, we started to um, uh, use the second Tuesday of the month at noon as our go-to time so that people know what to expect and when to expect us. Um, and thanks, so Molly, for putting the um, link in the chat. So, um, and that is also the same time, coincidentally, that um, Insights had started their special interest groups and Interreach then formalized as one of those special interest groups. In September of 2020, we actually created this reading and discussion club, which if you have been a part of us, a part of the Interreach crew for, um, for a little while, um, you'll know that those were a monthly sort of informal, non-recorded um, opportunity for us to gather around, you know, um, articles of interest or sort of sharing and getting feedback on programming. Um, and so that um, that has been less well attended. And so we've got some ideas about how to move forward with that offering um, in the coming year. So stay tuned for that. Um, at the end of the session, I'll talk a little bit more about that. And then in January of 2021, we had started a whole guest um, series where a guest um, host kind of um, identifies topics and and runs the whole um, series. And so we've kind of taken that model for a little while now. Last year, we had our um, series on surfacing and spanning specific boundaries within um, team science. We've also had series on um, inter or, um, interdisciplinary integration tools, um, as well as one on facilitation, one, one whole series on facilitation. Um, so that is um, kind of the evolution of how we've gotten to where we are this year with this new series that we're going to be launching um, starting in October. So with that, um, I'm going to pass it over to Amalia, who is going to share a little bit more about um, the survey that we sent out in the last few months, or last month. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Dean, if you would move ahead for me, please. Um, so uh, this survey was really to get a sense of um, what the interreach community is like today and how it maybe has changed um, since we did a baseline survey back in 2020. And we wanted to get a sense of people's needs and priorities, what was drawing them to the webinars or what was deterring them from coming to the webinars. So. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, about the results here. Go ahead, Christine. Okay, so just a little um, note on uh, how we've grown as a community. So the Interreach Listserv um, started in 2016 with um, 83 subscribers. When we did our baseline survey in 2020, it was up to 355. And now at this point, we have 630 subscribers. So we have 630 people who are, um, you know, really interested in having a, being a part of a community um, of people doing this integrative work. Um, and there are um, three, 36 people um, attending this webinar right now. So one of the things that we, we wanted to know about, um, which we'll talk about later is, uh, uh, is the content that we're presenting here in the webinars really um, what people are looking to see? So we'll, that's a teaser. Okay, 
So um, in uh, the responses, the professional affiliations of people who belong to Interreach, um, at least in the, I, I should note that 22 people filled out the survey for um, this year and 33 people filled it out back in 2020. So pretty small sample size, maybe not representative of the, the whole community. But for those who did respond, um, uh, most are in academic uh, positions or um, academic training programs. Um, uh, we have very little representation, it seems like, otherwise. So we're academically dominated. Um, What's nice, I think, is that it, it looks like from at least a, a professional like career perspective, um, there are people who are in early career, mid-career, and really senior, you know, established career phases. Um, so we can learn a lot from from each other um with being in those different stages. Uh, but we don't have a lot of representation from students and trainees um or administrators at this point. Um, so this is essentially unchanged since 2020. Um, role descriptions. So we we included more role descriptions in this survey than the last one and um, allowed people to choose, I think, up to three that actually resonated with them. Uh, so that's a little bit different from what we did in 2020, um, where we had fewer choices and then like an other option. Um, and I'm, I have highlighted here the interdisciplinary executive scientist, the integration and implementation sciences specialist, and integration expert. So those were, um, I think, three of the new ones that were, that were added, because we were trying to get a sense of, um, does anyone claim these as official titles? Because these are some of the, the, the titles um, that have been proposed to formalize um, this kind of integrative work as uh, as a career. And so at the moment, um, for the 22 people who responded, none of them claims the title of interdisciplinary executive scientist. Uh, but we do have a couple of people who are claiming I2S specialist and a few people who are claiming integration expert. So um, at least it, it seems like there may be some uptake of these as new roles and, um, and we may be... <laughs> um, you know, experiencing some kind of a shift in uh, in people sort of um, uh, making this uh, official. Other than that, we have um, a lot of knowledge brokers and um, many uh, researchers on interdisciplinary teams, and then researchers who study interdisciplinarity um, in these uh, in these groups. And that you'll see, there's there are zero interdisciplinary researchers that do not work on a team. You can't see the designation there that says not on a team, but that's great. <laughs> uh, okay, so you can uh, scroll ahead here. So again, we're trying to see how um, how much of this um, is being formalized in the form of job descriptions and titles. And so um, we asked you all if your um, if the this kind of integrative work that we talk about here in Interreach is actually an official part of your job description, or if it's something that you do kind of. Um, above and beyond uh, what is in your job description, um, because for a long time that has kind of been the norm. It's a certain kind of person who's drawn to this work, and um, but it is rarely explicitly um, asked for, so it becomes um, implicitly someone's responsibility to to be the arrow. Um, so whose uh, name is actually going into the arrow box? Um, I think we we had 35% of people um, actually who responded um, said that it this kind of work is actually explicitly outlined in their job description. And some of those roles included um, associate professor and chair of uh, the Department of Knowledge Integration, which is cool, um, facilitators. Uh, we have a director of integration and strategic partnerships. So these are some formalized roles for doing integrative work. Um, but then, of course, we still have 40% of people who um, say that this, this kind of work is still not included in their job description, but um, they do it on top of their official duties. And then there are some people who are not doing this kind of integrative work at the moment. Okay, engagement with interreach. We wanted to know um, how many of the webinars people 
caught? How consistent was engagement in this community? And so um, most people were kind of in the middle, like uh, one to two, three or four, five to seven times a year, um, they would uh, tune in for the, the webinars. So we have a, a small group that's attending just about every month and a small group that, that never attends the webinar. And so for those who do attend regularly, they um, basically said that um, they have enjoyed the programming, that it is relevant to their work, it's interesting, and it provides a vehicle for connecting with other people in this community. Um, for those who um, typically uh, either, you know, only attended one to two times or never attended, um, basically it seemed like most of them, it was due to a scheduling, scheduling conflicts. So people who can't make this, um, this Tuesday, regular Tuesday meeting. So not a whole lot of insight necessarily into, um, what, uh, we could do to improve engagement in, in here, but, um, we kind of, uh, we did ask some questions about that to maybe try to get at it a little bit more. All right. So, the comments that we got back about improving engagement um, and making sure that we were kind of meeting the needs of the community at this point um, was uh, clear and consistent communications would be would be helpful. And so, as as Christine said, this is you know an unfunded side gig uh, for um, people a small group of people. And as was noted in the the jam board for the the two words um, burned out. <laughs> I think we're all stretched pretty thin. So we really do the best that we can, um, but note it. <laughs> we will, um, we're trying to work out some uh, communication hiccups right now and hopefully that will be improved. Um, someone um, it, it noted that they were interested in opportunities for mentorship. And I think that's come up before that kind of opportunities for real connection and relationship building. Um, and then uh, more opportunities for those who are new to the community to contribute. So these are definitely some things to um, that we'll consider moving forward. And if anyone has ideas about, um, we would be very happy to hear from you about it. All right. There were a couple of questions um, that people put down that they um, thought we should have asked or would like to have seen on the survey. So, um, I'm not going to go into detail on these right now, but we are actually going to um, get at these in a little bit. All right, Christine, we we'll go forward. And then um, I think finally, the, the last thing that we got to in the survey was about this fate of the fourth Tuesday, what used to be the, the um, reading and discussion club, which was extremely interesting, but it was just a small group of people that would show up. Um, and so we gave a couple of suggestions to see if people might be interested. Um, and uh, so pretty much everyone who said that they could attend or would attend um, said that they would be interested in demonstrations of resources, tools, or activities. So that seemed to be a popular idea. A lot of people are really interested in the slow reading book club. Um, Right now, it looks like establishing local interreach chapters um, is not a priority to the community. And um, yeah, there are there were um, about a quarter of the people who said they they wouldn't attend for this or could not attend this fourth Tuesday. Okay, so that's um, kind of summarizing what we learned from the survey. If you did not um, fill out the survey, we would still love to hear from you and kind of get a baseline get. Um, you know, a, an assessment of what the community looks like right now and the priorities. So please, um, please offer um, uh, your your feedback in, in that survey. So we'll include the link uh, again to that before we leave today. All right. So now um, I know that a lot of why we come here is to interact with each other and get to know each other. And we have a, a small enough group today, I think, where it makes sense um, for us to actually talk to each other. So um, we also know that not everyone is that into going into breakout groups and talking. So we want to kind of make this um, uh, something that if you're if you're not into, you can opt out of. Um, so you do not have to join a breakout room. So please don't slam your computer shut. You can just come and join us after <laughs> we we all talk to each other. Um, but we're actually going to go. Um, 
back to uh, the Jamboard and you'll see there are a bunch of prompts on the third slide in the Jamboard. And um, two of those are the questions that we should have asked. And then um, there are a couple others that would help us to figure out um, what people are interested in doing and, and sharing. And so um, we're going to assign, I think we're assigning breakout groups. Um, yeah, I can tell you, uh, everyone will at first be catapulted into one, but uh, per Amalia's promise, you can leave and come to the main room if it's not a thing. Yeah. So we're just going to um, get together for about 10 minutes and, you know, go around, do it like briefly introduce each other and just get to talking. If any of these prompts resonates with you, um, just start chatting about them. And if uh, someone in the group who is not talking um, at, at a moment when something, a good idea or a key take takeaway take kind of comes up, if you would please add a sticky note underneath one of these prompts here so we can actually um, act on them. So we'll break out now and <laughs> we'll come back. I'm guessing actually about 12, oh boy, we don't have that much time. Um, 12.52, maybe we only have five minutes because um, we still need to go over a couple things when we come back in. But uh, we hope to have more opportunities to connect like this in the future. All right, to the um, breakout groups. Perfect. And one thing I see a good question um, from Craig in the chat. There's no report out necessary. So just experience a great conversation and then we'll pull you back from that. Um, hopefully that helps. Okay, I'm gonna open all the rooms. You should, uh, if anyone has trouble, just send, say something in the chat. Oof. Nice. Nice, y'all. <laughs> okay. I'm going to, um, uh, should I pause recording? All right. Welcome back everyone, or a couple, <laughs> a couple of folks. Here we go. Welcome, welcome. Hello, hello. Christine, can you tell are all the, is everyone back? Looks like it. Uh, great, excellent. Well, hope you guys had some great discussions in there and got to meet some of your fellow um, community members. Um, we are going to finish out by just sharing a little bit more information about the coming webinar. So let me go ahead and share my screen. All right. If you haven't already navigated over to um, the InterReach website, you can do so at interreach.org. This is what you'll see when you get over there. Um, but what I wanna point you to is more information about the upcoming webinar series. So up at the top here, upcoming webinars, you can click on that um, and you will be able to see, and my computer is very slow. Um, events for all of our upcoming webinars. So this one is um, starting today with this webinar, but then it goes into all of the webinars for this coming year. So, and again, they're always on the second Tuesday of the month from 12 to one, October 10th, bringing the field the history and future of a profession in being the arrow. That's with Gabriel Grammer, Bethany Lorton, and um, Christine. Um, you can see there's a couple where we've got details just coming soon, but um, the next one that we've got officially planned and ready to go um, will be in December. And that was on um, arrows in academia. So that's specifically focused on faculty. 
Um, and we're really trying to, like we said in the email, we're really trying to um, talk about how we how we might build this um, this profession and and continue to continue to build the profession for folks that may want to kind of grow up to be the arrow. Um, so we've also got another one in November that we're planning on um, uh, um, arrows in academia, but for non-faculty tracks. Um, from there, we've got one in January, a webinar on arrows outside of academia. Um, and then we're moving into trainees, so uh, postdocs and, and other um, trainees in, in transdisciplinarity and convergence. Um, and then we move into education part one, so university curricula and learning outcomes for convergence and transdisciplinarity. Um, and then we take a little break from that. We'll come back in, in the following month. But um, in April, we're going to be um, talking about publishing products for convergence and transdisciplinarity. Um, in May, we'll come back to that education track um, and talk about um, non-university, sort of non, um, non-curricula-based professional development for arrows. Um, and then we'll finish out the series in June with opportunities and challenges in, um, in developing this profession. Um, so kind of a recap and, and looking ahead. So um, one other thing I wanted to just point out on the website here is um, up at the top again, webinar series archives. If you click on that, you can see all of the old archives of all of our old webinars. So you can um, go back and, and, um, and watch the videos. Um, for, for each of those all the way back to November of 2016. So there's quite a bit there. And then the last thing, oh my gosh, we're at 12.59. Um, the last thing I just wanted to share is um, a sign-up sheet for our research, or our, our, sorry, reading and discussion club. Um, we're doing this takeover style. So um, what do you mean by takeover? We're providing the platform and you are providing the topic and all of the, um, your hosting and all of the communication around this topic. There is um, a Q&A, what's required of me. Um, what you'll wanna do is navigate over, uh, and Molly, if you could pop that in the chat, I don't know if you, um, yeah. This, um, we'll share this link so you guys can sign up, but the sign up is just on the second sheet um, in, in the link we're gonna share. Um, and so we'll just need your name, email address, affiliation, a topic that you want to potentially share. Thank you, Amalia, for sharing that um, for sharing that link in the chat. Um, and then you will run the whole session. So um, these are again on the fourth Tuesday of every month from 12 to one. If you have an idea for um, either a journal club or sharing um, and getting feedback on a a specific program. Um, these are this is a great opportunity to to connect with the interreach community in a um, less formal setting um, and, and um, get some feedback and, and connect. So um, I realize we're over time, so I don't want to um, belabor this. But if you guys have any questions about this, please refer to this. Um, this link, and then also feel free to email us at interreach.b.the.arrow at gmail.com. Um, so great. Um, thank you guys so much for being here. It's wonderful to see everyone again, and we're looking forward to a really great series this year. Great. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Good Bye. to see you. Thank you.